Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna, and today we've been doing all the secrets that I want to read. So let's get going. There's actually quite a lot of secrets that are coming out. There are a few secrets that I may not actually read, just because I didn't really have a fun time with the first books, but I will still mention them anyways in case you guys are interested. I will also be mentioning sequels that I know I won't read, but I will still mention it to you guys in case you guys want to read them as well. So, let's get going. So my first book is of course Heavenly Titan by Zidane J. Shell. It is a sequel to Iron Widow, which I love that book. I honestly don't know what's going on with that book. It was actually supposed to come out in April, but no, actually, the earlier times it was supposed to come out in January, then it got pushed back to April, and now it's coming out in December of this year, so I honestly don't know what's going on with that book, but I'm really hoping once it comes out that you guys will be able to support, support her as well. She actually did leave a comment in here, so apparently what happened is that the publishing didn't pay her enough to prioritize writing it, and so she really got exactly 14k USD in 2020, so which is the year she got her book deal. But because it's publishing standard to only pay authors twice per year and for sales periods months ago, she didn't see another cent until late April 2022, which is almost 8 months after Iron Widow got released. So she really had to write another book just because it didn't really make this sales goal ever gives the thing. So it's so sad what's happening with authors. I'm like they're literally making the publishers money and yet this is what they do to them. So I'm like I don't know, I just feel really, really bad for her and like I really hope things are okay. But this book will be coming out I'm hoping it will come out in December twenty fourth of this year. Like that's so quite a we were really waiting for a whole year just for that book, so I really hope everything is okay. So basically we're picking up after the first book and how Zeta imagine forces her to share powers with a dangerous man she cannot simply depose, despite having vastly different ideas about how they must deconstruct the corrupt and misogynist system that plagues the country, Zeta must join this man in advance of truths and lie and perform their roles to perfection in order to take down a common enemy who seeks to control them as puppets while dangling one of Zutan's loved ones as a hostage. So it comes out on December 24th. So my next sequel is the sequel to Strike the Zaita by Joan He and this is called Sound and Gong and all her life therefore has tried to rise above her humble origins as a no-name orphan. Now she is a god in Romeo's body, and never has she felt more powerless. Her lordless Zing Men holds the Westlands, but her position is tenuous. In the north, the Empress remains under Mia Simon's thumb. In the south, the alliance with Sakata is in pieces. It comes out on April 30th. So this is another sequel by Gabby Burton in Sing Me to Sleep. This one is called Drown Me with Dreams. It's coming out on August 20th. Zelosi Sokova is on the run. Accused of several murders, her Simon identity can promise. Even a newly crowned King Hayes can't protect her if she's caught. The only way to save her life is to send her on a dangerous mission across the magical barrier that surrounds the kingdom. Forced to travel with Kavik, once her best friend, now her greatest betrayer, she begins to unravel multiple plots that threaten the safety of her family, the livelihood of the entire kingdom, and her future with Hayes. And the more time she spends with Kavik, the harder it is to keep hating him. So I actually have yet to read the book. It's actually in my pile of tripod. I really should make a tripod since I am serious about YouTube now, so. Yeah, we're gonna have a lot of investments for my channel and I am excited, but uh, this is the second book in Silver and the Bone by Alexandra Bracken and it's called The Mirror of Beasts. It will come out on July 30th. With the dream of Avalon in ruins, Thompson and her friends are all that stands in the way of Lord Death's plan to unleash the horrors of Anwen on the world of the living. As the wolf hunt carves a bloody path across continents, 
comes to mustering allies, tracking down powerful artifacts, and traversing into new other lands in search of a way to stop him. So, that sounds really interesting, and I really should go finish reading the first book. I actually started it, but I just never got around to finish the book. So, and this is the sequel to the first book, Zada, Guardian of the Dawn, by S.J. Jones. And this is called Amy, and it will come out on August 6th. When the pillar blooms, the end of the world is not far behind. Lee Amy was always on the outside, outside of family, outside of friendships, outside of ordinary magic. The odd and central daughter of a former imperial magician, she has devoted her life to books because she finds them easier to read than, than people. Exiled to the utmost of the morning realms, Amy has become the sole caretaker of a mentally ill father whose madness and ravings may be more than mere ramblings. They may be a part of a dire prophecy. When her father is arrested for trespassing and stealing a branch from the sacred tree of the local monastery, Amy offers herself to, to the mysterious beast in the castle, who is in need of someone who can translate a forbidden magical text and find a cure for the mysterious blight that is affecting the harvest of the land. So, it is a Beauty and the Beast retail, which is an interesting intake, but we will see how that works out. And my next book is Blood Orchid. It's like the number two in the Scarlet Alchemist by Kylie Lee Baker and Mokama on October 1st. Since Zelen entered the world of Royal Alchemist, she has learned that alchemy comes at a price. She has lost loved ones in search of a border justice against the evil empress, and all she wants now is to find some way to bring them back. Rescuation is a specialty after all. That sounds so cool. So, we don't have too much information about this, but it is the number two in Princess of Sin. So, the first book is Throne of the Fallen by Kerry Metascalco, and this is called Throne of Secrets. So, it's just like this next standalone fantasy romance, and it will come out on September 24th. And that's all that we have. So my next sequel is A Moon Sun Rising. This is the number two in the Hurricane Wars by Thea Guanzon. And it will come out on October 22nd. And that's all the information that we have. And my next sequel is D Discipline, Disciplines of Chaos. And this is number two in Seven Faceless Saints. I still have yet to read it. And this is by M.K. Love. It will come out in February 20th which obviously it already came out. So Damien Venturi isn't aware of it yet, but as small shifts start to crack, the foundations of the Ombrazian power structure after the rebellion's attack, cracks are beginning to show in Damien's own facade. Uncontrollable anger is bubbling to the surface and can't always be pushed down. Can he keep everyone safe, even from himself? The complications of love, magic, and fate and war will keep Venus and an Ombrazian general alive from the front lines and orders dozens of arrests, shipping Mars and Damien's friends up north. Determined to free those from whom matter most, Mars and Damien set the sights, sights on the shot. But the journey is dogged by strange magic and Damien shifts uh, further from the boy he used to be. That sounds so cool. So this is the number two book in Friends Don't Bind, and this is called Hearts That Cut by Kika Hanzo Polu. It will come out on June 4th. It's been five weeks since Lo left Atlante to follow the golden thread, and she's no longer closer to finding the god on the other end. She spends her days of constant grueling travel and her nights moving over the fate thread she shares with Eni. Um, she, which seems to be fraying. Making matters worse, she and Bianca soon realize that the only land has shaken them off, snapped the golden thread, and disappeared. But not before Lowe gathers some crucial clues. Her investigation leads to her to a new mystery, a rash of sibling disappearances across the wastelands that seems to be connected to the murders in Lanti, and all signs point to Nancy, the golden city, as the center of the whole conspiracy. As Lo and ba Bianca make their way to Nancy, they face powerful enemies, find new allies and old, and uncover a horrifying plot. 
that the future of the world may truly rest on her shoulders, but she will have to determine how much of the future is her choice and how much is simply is her fate. So, I have read the first book I did not enjoy at all, but so which means I might not read a sequel, I'm not sure. But in case you do want to read it, this is the sequel to Immortal Longings and it's called Wireless Things by Chloe Gong. Carla Tulemi has succeeded in the possible. Despite the odds, she has won sad ends, bloody games, and eliminated King Kasa, her Thailand uncle and the former ruler of Thailand. She serves now as royal advisor to Kasa's adopted son, Argus Senshi, who has risen to the throne. All that Carla knows it isn't really August. Anton Makosa is still furious about Carla's betrayal in the final round of the games. In an impossible feat, he took over August's body to survive, and he has no intention of giving up this newcomb power. But when his first love, the beautiful explosive Arta Amy awakens from a year-long coma um, and reveals a secret that threatens the monarchy's authority over Talon, chaos erupts. As tensions come to a boiling point, Carla and Ed must set the conflict aside and head to the kingdom's far reaches to prevent anarchy, even if the empire might be better off burning. So these two books, I'm still not sure if I'm going to read it. I'm actually not sure if I read the first book, but this is Monstrous Nights by Genova Dimova. It will come out on October 22nd. With her magic reclaimed and her role in the community of Shinogan, Miss Tor calls out his life and she'll finally be back to normal. But of course, things can't possibly be that simple. She is now in possession of Thor of Witch's Shadow, which belonged to a series of young, magical, powerful women lured into the deadly marriage with his enemy, the Corsara, only narrowly escaped as a young woman. Holding them may grant her unforeseen in power, but that doesn't mean they're always willing to do her bidding. Across the wall in Belgrad, Aston chases the only lead in on his latest case, one of the several unsolved witch murders, even against the honors of his direct superior and mayor. He's convinced the small and king King Constantine Karavinov is behind them and follows his trail to an underground monster auction which leads him ba right back to Shinogland. No, so, that sounds interesting. And my last book, which again, I have not read the first book. This is Serpent Sea by Maya Imrahan. It will come out on September 17. Imani is a magic wielding warrior sworn to protect her land from the monsters that roam the desert. But even in most enemy now threatens the Sahari as the powerful Havel landers march south with the greatest weapon, Spice Magic. Imani knows it's only a matter of time before the invasion of her land begins, and there will be a losing battle for her people. But Imani also knows that one way to fight magic is with monsters. If she can restore Queen's stolen powers, together they can summon a supernatural army to defend Asali from the Hammerlanders. Forming an alliance with the genie king is risky, but Imani will do anything to save her people, even embarking on a dangerous quest beyond the sands to find a magical jewels of Queen's lost crown. So those are all the sneakers that are coming out this year and I may read some of them as well. But let me know what sequels you're excited for and please like, comment and subscribe so you'll be notified every time I post and I'll be, and I'll be seeing you in my next one. Bye!